All right, guys, let, let's not hype this too much, all right? <laughs> I'd first like to extend my deepest thanks to all of my classmates for giving me the opportunity to speak before you today. It's truly a great honor. And, of course, it's Mother's Day, so I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the moms who are here today. Hi, Mom. And, and indeed, all the family members who have helped raise us and, and get us to this point. 22-ish years ago, we were born, and we didn't come with any preset data or instructions. You guys just had to raise us the best you could as you went. And as we're here, graduating from this fine university on this beautiful day, I think it's safe to say you must have done something right. One of the alumni of the Fighting Saints ROTC program Retired Brigadier General William Leader likes to give speeches based on what he calls the three B's. Be good, be brief, and be gone. <laughs> I'm going to try and follow General Leader's three B's as I speak to you here today. Anybody who's involved with St. John's will tell you that there's something special about this place. Being a Johnny is different than being a graduate of a big state school or even other small private schools. As I was writing this speech, I was trying to think of what it was that made St. John's different. Is it the beautiful and vast forest that we call the Arboretum? Is it the iconic quadrangle building? Is it the luxurious amenities in Tommy Hall? <laughs> is, it, is it that feeling of joy when you go to the reef for dinner and they have both meatloaf and chicken tenders? <laughs> and what about the more interpersonal, per, interpersonal aspects of our experience here? Certainly the friendships we develop with our roommates and classmates, the late nights spent studying and the weekends spent socializing have something to do with what makes St. John's special. Well, I think that those are all pieces of it. There's something deeper going on here, something below the surface that drives St. John's uniqueness. The pieces of what make this place so special began to reveal themselves to me a couple months ago when I was talking to my academic advisor, Cynthia Curran. She was packing up her office because she was retiring, and, and I was telling her about how all of her students were going to miss her, and, and nobody wanted her to leave. After I said that to her, she looked at me and she said, you know, people never want things to change, but they always do anyways. And it was kind of funny, because after she said that, she kept talking, and, and I was pretending to listen, but actually, I was staring out the window having an existential crisis. She was, she was talking about taking down her posters and I was thinking about my life and my own mortality. Because while to Professor Curran saying that people fear change but it can't be avoided was a, was a statement born from years of life experience, to me, someone who's new to this whole adult thing, it was deeply profound. Because my life and the lives of all my friends were about to be transformed. Even though we wanted to hang on to the, the way things were, we wanted to hang on to each other. But we and all of humanity are constantly pushed forward by some invisible, mysterious force. Things can never stay the same. Things always have to change. But as I was thinking about my future and how, mu how much my life was going to change, I realized it already had changed. We aren't the same people that showed up here four years ago, lanyards around our neck, binge-watching Blue Mountain State. We've grown and, and experienced things. We've broadened our intellectual horizons, and we've even learned to do our own laundry. <laughs> and those changes haven't been bad. I mean, what's the point of being alive on this planet if we aren't going to try and experience new things and better ourselves? Although I do admit, I miss having my mom do my laundry. That was, that was just convenient. So as much as we're nervous and, and sad about the changes that are going to hit us in the next weeks and, and months and years, it's pointless for us to try to hang on to the way things are now. It was always going to change anyways, and, and that's hard. But in that change, there's going to be value, there's going to be learning, there's going to be growth and maturity. And we're not the only ones who've been dealing with change either. You know, over our four years here, our parents have been checking their bank accounts and every now and then, and those have been changing significantly as well. <laughs> so. So as I thought about what Professor Kern had said and, and about life and, and change, I inevitably ran into the Benedictine value of stability. And I think that that, more than anything else, that's what makes this place so special. About 150 years ago, some German monks brought their horses and wagons up to the shores of Lake Sag, looked around and said, this is it. This is the place. 
And as generations have come and gone, there's been change here. New faces fill the Abbey and the University. New buildings have been built, but this is still the place. We Johnnies love to talk about community. I think we have to put that word on each of our brochures at least three times. But we couldn't have the community we have without that stability. Think about as much as our lives have been changing over the last four years, this place and this community has always been there. When your dog died, when your parents converted your room into a yoga studio, <laughs> when you started to feel like things were so much different than they had been before, you always knew, like, you, always knew you could come back here and feel like you belonged. And when you see all the older alums walking into the football games and talking about what life was like here during the Truman administration, you realize... <laughs> You realize that the stability of this place extends beyond just these four years. It's like everybody here always says, once you're a Johnny, you're always a Johnny. And that stability is, is empowering. It's so meaningful to know that for the rest of our lives, no matter what happens, no matter if you become a president or a panhandler, St. John's will always be here and will always be home. And us, the class of 2016, we will always be inextricably connected. I look forward to hobbling into Tommy Johnny with you guys in 50 years talking about the old times and discussing how St. Thomas really ought to just start, in the, start building their uh, field goal posts a few more meters to the left at some point. <laughs> and as a final thought, I'd just like to say that as much as St. John's will always be there for us, I hope that we as a class are always there for St. John's and for each other and for the other alumni and for the future students. Because those original monks that settled this place 150 years ago are, are dead and gone now. The maintenance of the uniqueness and the community of this place now rests on our shoulders. Even with all the change that's coming to us in our lives, we have been incorporated into the pillar of stability that holds this place up. And I know that we will be good stewards. I'd like to end this speech uh, with the words of one of the most notable artists to have come out, ever come out of Minnesota, uh, Bob Dylan. May God bless and keep you always. May your wishes all come true. May you always do for others and let others do for you. May you build a ladder to the stars and climb on every rung. May you stay forever young. May your hands always be busy. May your feet always be swift. May you have a strong foundation when the winds of change shift. May your heart always be joyful and may your song always be sung. May you stay forever young. Thank you and congratulations class of 2016. We did it. <laughs>